hey, I'm not real proud of it, but I like caffeine and I drink a fair bit of coffee and tea. I've done videos talking about the fact that caffeine really isn't all that bad, but you don't want to have a lot of it. And personally, as a health oriented person, I wasn't exactly proud of the fact that I'd have a couple cups of coffee a day and then have some tea. Maybe it wasn't because I needed it, but I kind of liked the effect. Well, interestingly enough, I have to give a big shout out to my intern, Matt. You see, Matt came into my office one day and he's like, Thomas, have you heard of theocrine before? And I was kind of like, you know, I've heard little bits and pieces of it, never dove into any research on it. He's like, you've got to start checking this stuff out. So big shout out to you, Matt. We started looking at theocrine and how it works in the body. Interestingly enough, theocrine could very well be a very good alternative to caffeine that you don't have the issues with building up a tolerance. You don't have the negative crash that you would end up getting. You also don't get the jitters. But what exactly is theocrine? You may know it as teacrine, okay? Because teacrine is the trademarked name that's really capitalized on theocrine in general. And that teacrine, all it is, is an alkaloid molecule. What an alkaloid molecule is, is means it's really derived from like a plant source in a natural form. You see, the Chinese have been using theocrine for a long time. They have a particular tea that's called kucha. And the funny thing is, I've drank kucha before. I just had no idea this is what it had in it and it's proving to be pretty darn amazing. But let's talk about the actual physical differences between caffeine and theocrine so you can decide which route you want to go. So first and foremost, researchers have found that theocrine works in the body very similar to caffeine, which means it acts on what are called adenosinic receptors, but also adenosinic neurotransmission and dopaminergenic neurotransmission, which basically means it's affecting the signaling of dopamine and affecting the signaling of adenosine, similar to how caffeine would work. Here are the main differences between caffeine and theocrine. Caffeine, you develop a tolerance relatively fast. Most studies have found you develop a tolerance to caffeine within three to four days, meaning you need to start increasing the amount of caffeine you have after three to four days in order to get more of an effect. Whereas research has shown that with theocrine, even after seven or more days, there is no sign of building up a tolerance. Pretty powerful, especially if you're a chronic user. The cool thing is, they're found to have about the same level of potency in terms of overall physical energy output. And of course, to make things better, you're really not having a crash afterwards. You see, real quick science for you, the way that caffeine works is caffeine molecules occupy something called an adenosine receptor. And I've done videos on this before. Adenosine receptor looks kind of like this. Okay, caffeine molecule looks like this. It occupies the adenosine receptor. When it occupies the adenosine receptor, it prevents basically adenosine or fatigue molecules from coming in and making us tired. Then as the caffeine wears off, all the buildup of the fatigue molecules floods in and makes you really tired. That causes the crash. Theocrine is proving to not act in the same way, probably because of the balance on the adenosine receptors but also the sort of the counterbalance on the dopaminergenic effect, basically meaning it's helping you feel good even when you're starting to get a little bit tired. Couple that with the fact that there's no crash, couple that with the fact that you end up having less tolerance, you've got a pretty good little compound there. But there's some other effects that are really, really cool that even make it better and why I have now started to find kucha, the natural form, but I've even started looking into theocrine as a supplement just to get me through the day in lieu of caffeine. The big one, is the effect on the mood. Studies have now shown that just a single dose of theocrine can increase your dopamine levels in the body. Quite dramatically too. This isn't just some anecdotal stuff. This is a peer-reviewed study that is showing that theocrine boosts up your dopamine levels. Dopamine helps you feel good. It's sort of the positive reward system in your body. For example, if you were to feel good because you got complimented, you would have a surge of dopamine. If you were to feel good because something was really soft, maybe you pet a really fluffy puppy, okay? That is going to cause a surge of dopamine. It helps you feel good for a little bit. Theocrine is making it so you're always petting a puppy, at least in your mind. Then to make it even better, another study found that seven days of theocrine supplementation had a huge effect on the physical effects of stress on the body meaning a reduction in cortisol levels, but also a reduction in the stress impact on the body, causing inflammation, things like that, brain fog, all of that sort of thing. Okay, now let's jump over to liver detoxing. 
As if it couldn't get any better, it's starting to sound like kind of a miracle supplement or a miracle alkaloid. The way it works with the liver, you see the liver has to produce something called glutathione. Glutathione is what helps the cells recover. It's a powerful antioxidant that's produced by the body predominantly in the liver. Well, studies have found that theocrine supplementation increases the amount of glutathione that is inside our cells, meaning while adding energy to our bodies, it is potentially helping our cells detox and recover. That's pretty darn powerful. I think the Chinese had it right with their kucha tea. Then last but not least, studies are showing a reduction in inflammation. If you work out, or even if you don't work out and you're starting to work out, you are dealing with a level of inflammation. Working out by its very nature is triggering inflammation. So if we have theocrine that can show a reduction in inflammatory cytokines, show a reduction in inflammation, we can have reduced levels of cortisol and more ability to recover. So at the end of the day, everyone, I'm here to help you. I'm here to kind of find these new things, experiment on myself. I started taking theocrine. Matt, the intern, started taking theocrine. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have JR, who's behind the camera right now, start taking theocrine so that we can all perform at our best. Go well, check it out. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments regarding this topic or videos that you wanna see, make sure you comment below and let me know. Even though I can't always reply to those comments, either myself or a member of my team at least reviews them so that I can determine what the best videos to do to help you reach your goals are. I will see you in the next video.